Well, let's begin. Thank you for being here once again. My name is uh, Bruce Sterling, right? And as you know, I teach TOEFL and I write TOEFL books. And uh, I also give um, a free Sunday TOEFL lessons. And let's begin. So today's topic is we're going to talk about the listening section and listening strategies, okay? Uh, something I don't think gets enough attention. So we're gonna talk about the listening section and specifically strategies for analyzing each listening uh, section, the task and uh, how you could maximize scoring on test day. Now, remember all the strategies that I'm talking about come from my TOEFL books. There they are on the screen. Uh, you can visit Amazon or maybe a library where you are. The books are in the library. Beatrice, I don't know, you may want to try a, a Miami library. My books are all in libraries all over the world. Um, right, so is every, so one more question. Uh, Azita saying, is everything that you teach today on your website? Uh, yeah, it's actually on my YouTube channel, which is on my website, yep. Okay, I'm recording this, so this will be posted on my YouTube channel, and uh, it will be on my website. Yes. Okay. So everything I teach is basically from my books, right? So if you take lessons from me, this is what you will get. And as you know, if you have been uh, attending these lessons regularly, everything I do is based on the argument map G3 tick C, because uh, as you know, uh, TOEFL is all arguments. That is the major theme of my TOEFL lessons, my TOEFL books. TOEFL is all arguments, right? And an argument can be divided into three parts, G3 tick C. And we'll talk about this. Whoa, what's going on? And we'll talk about this. Um, we'll talk about this as we move along, okay? Uh, I'll define G3 tick C as we move along. So uh, as always, you can, um, answer, uh, uh, ask me questions at the end. Okay. Let me just uh, get an eraser here. I really don't want this line. Thank you very much. Hey, okay. Well, ask questions at the, at the end. So here we go. Listening section strategies. Now, uh, just a quick review just to, to identify where we are in the TOEFL process. So as we, we've talked about writing, we've talked about speaking, and now we're kind of moving on to listening. And as you know, the writing section and the speaking section are constructive tasks. Constructive means that you must build, you must develop. Construct means to build these two tasks. You build, you construct a writing, uh, an essay. You build and construct a summary. Well, um, the listening and the reading, reading section would be down here. They are actually selective tasks. And as you know, the, the, a selective task means you use the, the mouse and you select an answer A, B, C, or D, okay? Now, uh, let's just briefly review the listening tasks. There are, over here, there are three lectures. I wonder if I can do this. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, I can do that. Right, let me just uh, get my pointer happening here. Right, so there are three lectures, right? And the lectures are about five minutes long each and there are six questions, okay? There are also something called discussions. Discussions are discussions, talks between a professor and a group of students. Typically there's one of those and there are about five minutes and six questions, okay? And then there are conversations um, uh, and there are two of those and they are about five minutes each and there's about five questions for a total of 60 minutes. Okay, so the listening section is about 60 minutes long. Okay, and remember that you control the clock, right? You can spend as much time as you want on one question specifically. So be careful, you don't want to spend five minutes answering one question. My suggestion is when you answer questions for the reading section or the listening section, if you have a feeling Right. If you if you have a feeling A is the right answer, choose A. Okay. If you have a feeling B is the right answer, but you don't really know, trust your feeling and choose B. Right. So um, many many times, my TOEFL students have chosen uh, the correct answer. For example, they chose A. Oh my God! And then they think, oh, then they then they think, well, maybe it's B, and then they forget A and they change it to B. And what happens is. A is the correct answer. So in other words, trust your feeling, your intuition, 
Okay, especially if you're um, if you don't know what the right answer is, because I would say nine times out of ten, your intu your intuition is right, and you will get the right answer. So trust your trust your first choice. Okay. So a lot of people ask me, they say, hey, Bruce, how can we improve our listening skills to score higher? This is actually quite a common question. Now, my answer is, well, you know, test takers score low in the listening section. Some do anyway, not because they are poor listeners. It's not because they can't listen. It's because they don't know how to listen. So listening is a process. And for TOEFL, it's a specific process. And we're going to talk about that process and see how it connects to scoring so that you can maximize scoring on test day. So the question is, well, how do we listen? Tell me, how do we listen? Well, it all starts with the process of visualization. Visualization means in your mind, you are imagining a map, a picture. In this case, that map is the argument map G3 tick C. Well, what does G3 tick C mean? Well, it actually means introduction, right? Body, conclusion. And as you know, um, an essay, a summary, an argument has three parts, right? Introduction, body, conclusion, right? G3 tick C. Okay. Now, introduction, body, and conclusion, we can also describe as being general information in the introduction, right? And it moves to specific information in the body, right? That would be the body. And then it moves to general information in the conclusion, okay? So all arguments and all summaries move from general information to specific information in the body to general information in, in the conclusion. And this is what you have to visualize. Okay, introduction, body, conclusion. I have just made it a bit more technical with the map G3 tick C. Three means, th three means three body paragraphs. TIC means each body paragraph is divided into a topic sentence, an illustration, and a cause and effect reason. But for our purposes, just knowing the fact that an essay or an argument is divided into introduction, body, conclusion, and that form moves from general information to specific to general information is all you need to know. Okay, well, when most test takers listen to a TOEFL le lecture, they get all confused. There's just so much information coming at you. Okay, there's just way too much information. So how do you score? How do you maximize scoring? Well, what you have to do is you have to be able to anticipate the information, the structure of the information you're going to listen to. Okay. And by being able to anticipate the structure of the lecture or the discussion or the conversation, you'll be able to take better notes. And if you can take better notes, you'll get higher scores. So remember that no matter what you listen to, um, it all moves in a, predict a predictable form, okay? Even though what you listen to might sound like a, a confusion of words, it's actually moving in a specific direction. It's actually flowing like water. It's not random. It's very specific. And that applies to lectures, discussions, and conversations. Believe it or not, the lectures and the discussions and the conversations all start with general information, and they move to specific information, and they end with general information. Okay, once again, all TOEFL lectures, right, discussions and conversations all move in a predictable pattern. And that pattern is the pattern you have to visualize in your mind when you listen to lectures, conversations, and um, discussions. That flow of information is from general to specific to general. And this pattern is predictable. Okay, that pattern is so predictable. In fact, TOEFL is very predictable. And that's a really important test strategy because if it's predictable, you know where the information is going to be, the important information. And if you know where the important information is going to be when you listen, um, specifically to this map, general, specific, general, you will know um, where, where, the, where the correct information, where the, where the important parts of the argument are, and that will help you answer questions as we will soon see, okay? So basically visualization, right? If you're listening to a lecture, visualizing uh, a lecture means you anticipate the fact that the first thing you're going to hear is a general statement. The next thing you're going to hear is 
specific supporting information. And the next thing you're going to hear is a conclusion. Okay. So anticipate. And let's actually do that. Let's actually see how that process works so that you can anticipate what you're going to hear. Um, and so you can take good notes and get higher scores. So let's look at lectures first. Okay, and remember all TOEFL lectures predictably move in this pattern. There are no surprises. So the very first thing is, right, so say we're listening to a lecture and this professor is giving you a lecture, you're listening to uh, TOEFL lecture number one, and as you're listening, anticipate the topic. The very first thing you're going to hear is the main idea, the main topic. And as you know, the main topic is a general statement. And let's say, for example, the professor, the general statement, the topic is African animals. So when you're listening to the le lecture, say to yourself, okay, here comes the main idea. Very first thing, main idea, what is it? Ah, there it is, it's African animals, okay? Because typically there might be a question, you know, what is the main topic of this lecture, right? And if you can anticipate the topic, you'll be ready to identify the main idea because probably there's going to be a question about the main idea. TOEFL is very predictable that way. They want to know if you understand the general topic, the general concept being discussed. So, and then after you hear the main idea, you keep anticipating, okay, okay, what's next? What's next? Okay, so then you anticipate, okay, here comes the body. Um, three means three body paragraphs, okay? So we anticipate, ah, here are the illustrations. So after the main topic come the illustrations. TOEFL is very predictable this way. And then you think, okay, oh, there's, there's illustration number one. The professor's talking about lions. Lion is an African elephant. And you're saying, okay, then you're saying you're over here and you're going, okay, he's talked about lions. Give me another example, professor. Okay, he talks about zebras, ah, okay. Now, typically, TOEFL lectures, usually there's two body paragraphs. I just did three just for the sake, for the sake of um, development. And in this lecture, the professor talks about a vulture, a bird. Okay, so there you go. You anticipated the three topics. And as you anticipate, take notes. Okay, that's very important. You think, okay, so I anticipated the topic, African animals take notes okay give me the illustrations professor and as you anticipate the illustrations take notes about lions take notes about zebras take notes about vultures okay so and when the professor is done developing the body say to yourself okay anticipate what's next oh sorry i'm jumping ahead of myself here sorry um now as you anticipate questions right especially in the body paragraph right um, this goes back to one of our first lectures. We'd actually talked about rhetorical strategies. Remember that way back. If you've been here since the beginning, we talked about rhetorical strategies. So when the professor develops the body paragraphs, he will use description, possibly compare and contrast and cause and effect. Okay. Um, description means he will talk about the lion. The lion is a cat that weighs, well, I don't know what, 500 kilograms. Uh, males have a big shaggy mane, females don't, right? They are carnivores, okay? Uh, description would be a zebra is black and white. They use this for camouflage. They look like horses, but are actually not horses, all right? Compare and contrast could be, you know, uh, lions eat meat, whereas uh, um, zebras are vegetarians, vultures eat dead meat, okay? Lots of compare and contrast. Cause and effect could be used as well. Cause and effect means action plus reason, okay? Uh, for example, cause and effect could be when a lion is hungry, it starts to hunt, cause and effect, right? Or when an animal dies, action, the effect is a lot of birds such as vultures will move in to eat those dead animals, okay? So as you can see, as a as as, as in, a, in a lecture, as a paragraph, as a paragraph, as a as a professor develops the body paragraph topics, he will very often use these compare uh, these rhetorical strategies for listen. So listen to them, okay? Especially compare and contrast. Compare and contrast is a a great well great way to develop topics uh, in detail. Okay, the professor will also use something called authentic, authentic language use. Um, authentic language means basically natural, natural speech patterns. TOEFL, TOEFL calls them natural speech patterns. Basically, it's, it's norm, normal English, right? 
So authentic, authentic, authentic language questions could could mean tone. For example, um, why does the uh, the professor say don't ever feed a wild lion? Well, the tone you can tell is is uh, suggests a warning. Could be a question about that. So if you hear tone, if the professor changes his tone you know that there's probably going to be a question about it. If the professor uses an idiom, for example, down here, why did the professor say lions are king of the jungle? That's an idiom. Okay, probably going to be a question about it. Now, if the professor hesitates, right, typically there may be a question about it. Why does the professor hesitate? Another question might be a rephrase question. Why does he re rephrase his idiom? Why did the professor say lions are the king of the, oh, no, the queen of the jungle, right? So if, he, if he's rephrasing, there's probably a question. So basically, TOEFL uses authentic language to build questions around. So if you hear a tone change, if you hear an idiom, if you hear a hesitation or a rephrasing or a point repeated, chances are there are probably going to be questions about that. So that's how you anticipate where TOEFL uh, puts questions, connects questions to the actual lectures, uh, in, uh, specifically in regard to uh, language, okay? Tone, idioms, hesitation, rephrasing, and repetition, okay? So that typically happens in the body, okay? Because the body is has a lot of room for development, and the professor will spend most of his time developing that. So once the professor develops the body, you're going, okay, here you are, you're still anticipating. So here comes the conclusion, right? We've had our main idea, good, you anticipated that. It's about African ele elephants. And then you said, okay, here come the illustrations next. And we got our illustrations, our three animals. And then you have to say to yourself, okay, okay, illustrations are done. Here comes the conclusion. So you anticipate the conclusion and there it is. Okay, now this professor ends by making a comment for example, about animals being endangered. Okay, maybe lions are endangered. Maybe zebras are endangered from climate change or something. Maybe vultures are endangered because there's not enough food to eat. Okay, it's always case by case, but no matter how the professor ends, no matter what his conclusion, typically TOEFL will ask you a question about um, that conclusion. That's how TOEFL um, develops questions specific to the, the structure of the lecture, in this case, asking a question about the conclusion. So because you know TOEFL will do that, because you're, in to because you're anticipating the TOEFL testing structure, because you're playing the game, because you know that a lecture has three parts and each part is basically going to be, uh, going to be questions about it, you can anticipate it and be ready in this case, there's going to be probably be a question in the conclusion. So there we go. If, when you map it out, here we have our lecture on the right. We are talking about African, African animals. That's a general question. General questions about the intro and then anticipate, move on to specific questions about the body and then prepare yourself for a question about the conclusion. So what you're doing is you're not just listening to a bunch of random words going by. You're anticipating the specific logical order of this lecture about African elements. And TOEFL is very predictable this way. So basically you're using the strategy of predicting to identifying where the topic will be and the questions based on the topic, where the body paragraph questions will be and how to anticipate them and anticipating the conclusion and identifying and being ready to take notes about the uh, question about the conclusion. And you can actually map this uh, task out using G3 tick C. If you take my books, you'll know more about this. But remember, G means general statement. There's our general statement about African animals. Whatever the professor says about African, excuse me, African animals. You know, African animals are rapidly going extinct. That could be the general topic question. And he develops three endangered animals and makes a conclusion about that, that environmental problem. And basically, once again, simply put, it's general, specific, general. So this is what you have to memorize. You have to put this in your mind when you listen to the lecture. Okay, first, here comes the general statement. Oop, okay, next comes specific. Next comes the conclusion. Okay, 
this is so predictable. When I took the TOEFL test, it was just, I said to myself, okay, lecture, okay, we're gonna have the topic sentence. Bang, there was the topic sentence. Okay, here come the examples. Bang, there were the examples. So by being prepared, by being prepared for what you're going to listen to, you will have more time. So you'll be able to anticipate what you're going to hear and then you'll be able to be prepared to take notes. You're ready to take notes because you know what's coming. People, uh, test takers have a hard time taking good notes because they're not anticipating. They hear the point and then they take notes, okay? But what I'm saying is anticipate and be ready because when the point comes up, you can grab it with a note, okay? That's how you take good notes, by anticipating the flow of information. And hopefully, um, you'll get a higher score on test day. Okay, so that's the... Um, that's how you map out and visualize and take notes for the lecture. Uh, the listening uh, section lecture is very predictable that way. Now there could be two body paragraphs. Typically there are, uh, depends on what the topic is. There could be three body paragraphs, okay? So let's move on to discussions. Okay, we've talked about uh, lectures, uh, structuring uh, lectures and how they connect to uh, topics and questions and note taking. Let's talk about discussions, okay? So with a discussion, we have a professor, right? It's just like a classroom. A professor's talking to, um, you know, typically three students. It could be, it could be two, it could be three. But, you know, once again, it just sounds like a bunch of people talking. But if you analyze this task, you will realize that each character, notice I'm saying character, each character in this movie, in this play, in this TOEFL discussion has a purpose. Okay, what we're getting into here is a lot of task analysis. And this is what my books talk about. We analyze each task. How did TOEFL design this task? Right, right. And I think really, it's really important to understand how the test is made. You know, have you ever eaten a pizza and gone, how did they make this pizza? Mm, that's really good. A bit of pepperoni, a bit of mushroom, a bit of garlic, a little cheese. Oh, okay. And if you can uh, identify the ingredients, how something is made, then you'll be, uh, you'll be able to recreate that. Okay, and that's what we're doing here. We're basically analyzing how TOEFL creates tasks, specifically in this case, the, uh, the discussion. So each character has a purpose, right? Right. Now the purpose of the professor is he introduces the topic, you know? He is the man, he is the, the MC, the major D. He is the, uh, the leader of the group. He introduces the topic, and the topic, as we know, is a general statement. It's an introduction. Okay, now typically what will happen is the students, right, he will invite the students to develop that topic. So the students are really like a giant body, right? They will develop the topic. And as we see, we have three students here, and each one will develop an idea, and that would be three body paragraphs, three tick. Okay, interesting that way, and TOEFL is very predictable this way. Okay, now the, the trick is each character has a different tone, a different voice, a different style of speaking. So that's what you have, be prepared to listen for that, okay? So here we are mapped out. We have the professor introduces the topic as a general statement, and then we have our students developing the body, three body paragraphs in this case, okay? Right. So here we go. So what you're doing is, once again, you're listening to this discussion. It's beginning, right? It, the, the discussion starts. And once again, anticipate the topic. That's the main idea. The professor introduces the main idea. And in this case, he's talking about presidents. Okay, class, today we're going to talk about presidents. Okay, then you take notes. Presidents, we're talking about presidents. That's the introduction. Okay. I mean, he could talk about any topic about presidents. I'm not sure what you could talk about. You could talk about the... Uh, uh, three presidents who were assassinated. Uh, three presidents who, oh, I don't know, three presidents who fought big wars. Three presidents who were very corrupt and dangerous. I think Donald Trump would probably be at the top of that list. Okay. So really, um, the topics could be um, anything. Okay. And then what happens is, right after the professor introduces a topic, you have to say to yourself, you're listening here, you're going, okay, here come the illustrations. The students are going to develop each topic. Okay. 
So what you're doing is you're, you know the structure and you're anticipating what's coming. And this student, student number one, she talks about Bill Clinton. Okay, you're going, ah, great, okay, there it is. She talks about Bill Clinton, take notes, okay? Then after she finishes, the, pr the professor will probably do some kind of transition. And then the next student will talk. Ah, and you anticipate that as well, okay? The first student talked about uh, Bill Clinton, great, check, okay, she's finished, great. Transition into the next student, he talks about Abraham Lincoln, great, take notes, Lincoln, okay? And remember, the professor will be developing the topic of Bill Clinton, topic of Lincoln. I'm not really sure what the connection between Lincoln and Clinton is right now. Uh, Clinton had a sex scandal. I don't think Lincoln had a sex scandal, right? Anyway, so uh, now, see, so you can see the pattern. So you can actually anticipate what's next, right? You're going to say, okay, Bruce, you're going to give me another president, right? Which president do you think it is? It is Barack Obama. Yay. Okay. So each student is developing a topic, right? She develops the topic of Clinton, he develops the topic of Lincoln, he develops the topic of uh, Obama, and they will develop them in detail. And once again, um, as the students and the uh, as the students and the uh, professors speak, you know, anticipate the question types. Okay, once you have three topics, that will invite compare and contrast. Okay, this goes back to the idioms we studied at the very beginning. TOEFL loves to use compare and contrast as a testing method. You know, compare, oh, I don't know, compare what Lincoln did to what Clinton did or whatever the question might be. You can see by virtue of the fact that we have three different topics, it's perfect for asking compare and contrast questions. Narration in this case would be De describing the history. Bill Clinton was born in, he was raised in, he went to school, he was governor. Basically, narration is um, information moving through time. Lincoln was born, he was, he was a lawyer, then he was married, then he was president. Da -da 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 -da. Lots of narration questions, right? If you're talking about people and their biographies, right? Cause and effect. TOEFL loves cause and effect, okay? Uh, cause and effect would be um, President Obama introduced Obamacare, universal health, what was the effect, etc. Okay. Depending on the topic, there could be any number of uh, rhetorical strategies, but TOEFL loves compare and contrast and cause and effect. Okay. So there you done. There you are. You've anticipated the the topic. Okay, presidents. You've anticipated the three body paragraphs, and now you're going okay. Uh, the body's finished, and you you continue to anticipate, and you think, okay, what's next? Here comes the, give it to me, the conclusion. There you go. You're anticipating, right? You're saying, TOEFL, TOEFL, you're not that complicated. I know exactly what you're doing, TOEFL, because I'm anticipating each step. You're kind of like detectives, <laughs> anticipating each step of a crime, okay? Because crimes all happen the same way. Not that I know anything about crimes. Anyway, so you anticipated the conclusion. And typically what happens is the professor comes back. The professor concludes. So the professor's like a bookend. He'll introduce it, invite students to talk, and then he will transition into the conclusion and he will probably introduce a new topic. Maybe in this case, he talks about a woman president. Right, okay. And maybe, perhaps, probably, in fact, there will be a question about that. You know, he will make some comment. For the longest time, America's always had men as presidents. Well, when do you think we'll get a, a woman president or something? And whatever he says, there will probably be a question about it. Anticipate that question. Anticipate, anticipate that question. And do, by, when you do so, uh, take notes. So really, it's a process of anticipating, anticipating ideas right? Main idea, illustrations, conclusion, and being able to anticipate, take notes about each section. That's how you combine note-taking and anticipation of the structure you are listening to, be it a lecture, a discussion, or a conversation. Okay, so there we go. And once again, right, as you know, the introduction, right, would be general, right? General questions. That's how TOEFL frames their um, or designs their quest set of questions and the body will be specific questions and the conclusion will be general questions. Once again, it maps out with the argument map G3 to C, general body 
and conclusion. And as you can see, this is the same structure uh, that the lectures were built around, the, the, right? Every TOEFL lecture is built on this same structure. And it happens with the discussions as well. If you look at a discussion, a TOEFL discussion as a tape script, it maps out exactly like an argument. And as you know, an argument has three parts. Those parts are G3 to C or general specific general or intro body conclusion, however you want to define it. However you define it, right, each part is predictable. I don't think this strategy is stressed enough. In fact, when I visit YouTube, I don't hear anybody, any TOEFL teachers or TOEFL authors talking about the, the strategy of prediction, okay, especially when it comes to the listening section. And you predict by visualizing each step of the the argument process. Okay, and as you know, an argument is an essay and um, a lecture, a lecture, right? A TOEFL listening lecture is just a verbal essay. So is a, a TOEFL discussion and so is a TOEFL conversation. Okay, so we've had lectures, right? TOEFL lectures, discussions, those are the academic parts of the, the task, right? Because TOEFL's recreating the US college experience. You go to college, you listen to lectures, you uh, in, engage in discussions, okay? And then you also, right? You also talk, you have general conversations outside the classroom, okay? Now there are two types of, um, you know, conversations, right? And one is, <clears throat> excuse me, one is a student. Here we are, student and professor, right? I think these are called academic talks, right? A student and professor, a student will go visit his professor or her professor after class, right? Uh, on campus, a student will also talk to a staff member, okay? So we have an academic conversation and we have an informal, um, just a regular conversation. Now the, the, the whole, the, what you have to remember about these two types of conversations is they are both based around the idea of problem solution that is what you must anticipate you must say okay i'm going to hear a, a conversation between a student and a professor the student's going to have a problem uh the professor is going to offer a solution once again very very predictable now the student's going to have an academic problem and in the uh the faculty staff um conversation the student will have a non-academic problem so basically, TOEFL is recreating the student experience at an American college by having these two types of conversations. And remember, both are, if you map them out, if you analyze them, they are both based on problem solution. Now, you're a student. Why would you go see your professor, right? Just to say, hey, yo, what's up? Give me some coffee. No, <laughs> you don't do that. Students always go because they have problems, right? Unless they just want to go chat and have a coffee, but usually there's a problem connected. Okay, so let's actually, uh, right? Let's actually take a look at a uh, problem solution for a student staff conversation. Okay, let's start with this one. Now the student will always have a problem, right? Going to find out how to solve this problem. And typically the problem is a general statement. There we are, okay. The student would say, hi, how are you doing? Um, you know, I have a car, but you know, there's a big problem. There's no parking, okay, that's, that's a problem. So what's gonna happen is, what you must do is you must anticipate, okay. You've heard the problem, okay. You anticipate it, the student, the first thing the student's gonna say is I have a problem. And then what's gonna happen next is that the the staff member is going to offer two solutions. And the staff member is also going to offer a resolution to the student's problem, right? Very predictable pattern, right? We start with a general introduction, which is the problem. And then we move into the body, which is the two solutions, okay? And then we have a resolution, which is a conclusion. So it kind of maps out like this, okay? So we have our, our general introduction, which is our problem. We have our two body paragraphs, which are our solutions. And then we have a conclusion. So what you must do is anticipate each step, right? Each step of the argument development. In this case, it's a conversation, but it's really an argument if you analyze the tape script. And as you anticipate, right, you know the problems first, solutions, resolution. So 
once again, memorize this mental map, this problem solution map and anticipate each step as we're doing now. So you, you anticipate the introduction and it's very important because there will probably be a question about it, a general question about the main topic. In this case, why does the stu student go and see the admin? A uh, question based on the introduction, the general topic. And then you anticipate, okay, I've heard the problem. I've had a question on the problem. Now I'm going to have problems on the, the solutions. Anticipate the body. There we are, two body questions. And that question could be, which solution is least expensive? The admin gave the student two solutions. You know, maybe, I don't know, park off campus at a, uh, a paid parking lot or use a parking meter or something off campus, whatever the solution is, okay? You anticipate the fact that there will be two solutions and you're ready to take notes about those solutions. And then after that, typically, right, in the conclusion, anticipate the conclusion. You're gonna say, okay, we've heard the two solutions, we've heard the problem, okay, what's gonna be in the conclusion? Well, there might be um, a question about what will the student do next, right? In the dialogue, the students say, might say, well, hey, thanks for that information. Thanks for those solutions. You know, I think I will think about it. Okay, so the question would be, what will the student do next? Well, will he buy a ticket for a parking lot? Will he use a parking meter? Will he sell his car or will he think about it? Well, that would be question D, he will think about it. Okay, so as you can see, once again, you're anticipating, you're anticipating the design of this conversation. You're anticipating the introduction and the introduction has a problem. You're going to anticipate what comes next, which is the two body paragraphs, which are the two solutions. And then you're going to anticipate the conclusion and the resolution. Okay, anticipate, anticipate, note take, uh, anticipate note take, right? That's a good that's a good way to put it. Okay. And so that was the problem solution for the student and staff non academic problem sol problems solutioning. No, I can speak English. Non non academic problem solving is what I want to say. Okay. And the other conversation is the academic conversation between a student and his or her professor. Okay, and it's it's exactly the, the same map. So here we are, the student goes to his professor and he says, you know, I'm failing. That's the problem. That's the general introduction. That's the topic and he needs help. Hello, professor. Can I come in? Yes, you can. What's the problem, Johnny? Well, I have a problem and it is I need help because I'm failing. Okay, good. You anticipated that. So now you anticipate the next step. You've heard the introduction, the problem. You anticipate the next step. The next step is, ah, two solutions. Get your pen ready, take notes. Right, so the professor is going to offer two solutions to Johnny failing his, oh, I don't know, chemistry class, right? Whatever those two solutions. Do more homework, you get a tutor, uh, whatever, okay? Change, change, uh, change majors, I don't know, right? Right, and then you know we've heard the, the problem stated, introduction, we've heard the solutions in the body, and then you're listening and you're anticipating, okay, we've had the solutions, next we're going to have the resolution. We're gonna bring the problem in for a landing. And whatever that re re resolution is, um, you know, whether Johnny takes gets a tutor or whatever he wants to do, there will probably be a question about it. What will Johnny do? Will he A, get a tutor, B, drop out, C, um, do more homework, or D, uh, well, I don't know, D, whatever D is, I'm just, I can't think of an answer, but right, that's how it will go. So TOEFL is very predictable, right? Right? Anticipate, anticipate the very beginning of the lecture, that's the introduction, that's the topic, anticipate the question, right? In this case, why does the student go and see the prof? You'll know because he's failing, right? Anticipate the body, right? Um, how many, in this case, how many papers can the student rewrite? There could be a question about, um, you know, essay writing and how many rewrites do I get before I fail? And uh, general question, anticipate the general question in the conclusion, what will the student do next? Okay, anticipation, Antis prediction, anticipation, and note-taking, right? Connects to higher scoring. 
So there we are. We have uh, we have our body here, our introduction, right? There's our, our task mapped out, general body, general specific body conclusion, and there there we have the the design of the task, the conversation over there. It's problem solution or resolution. Anticipate each part, right, and take notes about it. Very very important. Anticipation, prediction, note taking creates. Um, uh, yeah, you increase your chances of getting a higher score, okay? So as you can see, we're just repeating the same process. We talked about the lectures and the discussions and the, the conversations, and it's all a process of anticipating each one. Each one that begins with a general statement, moves on to the specific body information, moves on to a conclusion. It doesn't matter if it's a lecture, a discussion, or a conversation. You have to anticipate each moment and be prepared to take notes for each moment, okay? As I said, it is predictable, right? It's so predictable. Anticipation leads to good notes, right? Eat, which leads to higher scores, okay? So mapped out, it looks like that. There is your, there is your map, general specific, general information. And, and as I said, it's basically in my books mapped out more specifically using the argument map G3 tick C. And as you can see, um, right, this structure is actually the same structure um, used when writing an independent essay. That is why my books all begin with the independent essay, because you're learning this structure, general, specific, general. You really need to learn this structure because every TOEFL task is based on this structure. And I map it out using G3 Tixi. Every reading passage follows this structure. Every listening lecture discussion and conversation follows this pattern. Every TOEFL integrated summary follows this pattern. Every TOEFL independent essay follows this pattern. And I've mapped it out using the argument map G3 tick C. So it really is truly an integrated strategy because once you learn how to write a proficient um, independent essay, then you take this information and you apply it as we've seen to the listening section. And you'll realize that TOEFL is basically repeating the same task design based on the argument map, general, specific, general, or G3 tick C. Okay, process of anticipation and um, note taking, right, and prediction. So, um, right, so that's the argument map, G3 tick C, right. So if you use this argument map, the general, specific, the G3 tick C mapping process, you'll know exactly what to do on test day, how to do it, you know, where to do it, right, when to do it, you know, introduction, body, conclusion, and you'll know why, you'll know why you have to anticipate, you, you'll know why you have to predict in order to uh, take good notes to get a higher score. So the result is you have a greater awareness of the task at hand, you have greater confidence because you know exactly what to do. If you're more confident, your responses will demonstrate greater proficiency greater proficiency means greater coherence you understand exactly what you have to do and why when where how and what to do and the result is a higher score on test day 